Tonight, top European Union stories from the Unit UK include the EU law on non-financial reporting, how we got there. EU, Switzerland edge towards free movement accord. And EU project to improve food safety. Belgium and Finland face daily fines for breach of energy waste law. Plus, you can trust me to keep my EU referendum promise, says Dave Cameron. The EU building an Orwellian state. That's the topic up for discussion in our live table talk. We have been reporting on the European Union's Copernicus program, which has already begun and will see the launch of many Sentinel satellites into orbit. We will be looking at what the system is capable of doing, and we will also be correlating this back to the legislation and articles here on the Unit UK website. For example, the ability that will provide police with remote tracking and control of vehicles. Now, it's Tuesday, 6th of May. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. The EU law on non-financial reporting, how we got there. A historic law finally passed in the European Parliament yesterday, under which major businesses across our continent will be required to report on social, environmental and human rights impact in their annual company report. Now, I first proposed this change to EU accounting directives in a European Parliament report as long ago as 1999. The long journey of the campaign provides a case study in how to win the argument for sustainability against businesses, association lobbyists, who have remained steadfast in their opposition until today. The low point came in 2006 when Business Europe, having been given access, lobbied then-Commissioner Gunther Verhagen to tear up draft proposals to be replaced with a text which rejected regulatory action, a new definition of corporate social responsibility was adopted, which effectively ruled out further dialogue. As the constructs wrestled to retain its hold on the serfdom, the red tape and bureaucracy continues to apply. Now, when I go out and talk to businesses, which happens very regularly through our speaking engagements, the word, they are so weighed down with all the administration of these rules and regulations. Ultimately, this is causing traditional businesses to break apart and morph into more sort of project-led communities of individual contractors. Now, how it will turn out in the long term is harder to predict, but I think we're approaching a chasm of disruptive change. EU, Switzerland, edge towards free movement accord. Now, the European Union and Switzerland are close to resolving a spat over Swiss immigration curbs, although Britain has asked for more time to consider the proposals, EU sources said Wednesday. EU ties with non-member Switzerland have been strained since a Swiss referendum in February when the country voted by a razor-thin margin to establish immigration quotas, jeopardising a range of agreements with the EU based on a commitment to free movement of people. Uh, Talks to try to resolve the row have been taking place since at expert level and the Swiss had appeared hopeful of a breakthrough on Tuesday. Britain asked for more time so that ministers could look at the text being negotiated, a British diplomat told the Associated Free Press. But work on going, said a spokeswoman for EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton. At stake is a general mandate for the European Commission to negotiate an umbrella agreement between the European Union and Switzerland, which was suspended after the controversial referendum. The EU also suspended Swiss participation in EU research and education programmes, the Erasmus Plus project, after Switzerland called off a deal opening the labour market and giving access to Croatia. EU Road to Improve Food Safety The EU project Promise has been launched with the goal to focus on common food safety threats and protecting European consumers. Food safety, animal welfare, plant health and labelling and traceability are the concerns which require improvement. 
the EU-funded Project Promise, launched in January 2012, and aims to improve and strengthen integration between the EU's new and old member states and candidate countries regarding food safety. The focus is on common food safety threats and protecting European consumers. The 36 months project is linked with several other EU-funded schemes and will benefit from their results and know-how. The general objectives include boosting collaboration and knowledge transfer through exchange of expertise, regional training and dissemination actions. Another objective is to integrate public health and national food safety authorities in order to exploit research results. The consortium also seeks to analyse, assess and interpret the risk of introducing new strains of pathogen by illegal importation of food from third countries into the EU, where the food supply chains are not controlled. I just love the way these European agencies report on these legislative proposals. Give the project a funky, fun name, big up the public benefits over safety and welfare in the first few paragraphs, and then comes the played down power grab. Pretty much the same deal with the legislative reports and directives in our legislation section. Now, the point I'm focusing on here is integrating public health. But what does that mean, I wonder? A European health service, perhaps? Well, that would certainly dovetail perfectly with the TTIP agreement to harmonise and deregulate health services across the USA and the EU. All rather fortuitous for multinational pharmaceutical companies. We'll have more on this topic in the future. Belgium Finland faced daily fines for breach of energy waste law. Belgium and Finland face fines for failure to implement European Union law on making buildings more energy efficient, EU regulators said on Wednesday. The European Commission, the EU's executive arm, is asking the Court of Justice of the European Union in Luxembourg to apply a penalty of 19,178.25 euros against Finland and 42,178.5 euros against Belgium for every day that they do not comply with EU law. EU law on reducing energy waste means member states must establish and apply energy performance requirements for all buildings, ensure certification of buildings, energy performance and require the regular inspection of heating and air conditioning systems. In addition, the directive, which has to be translated into national law, requires member states to ensure that by 2021 all new buildings are nearly zero energy buildings, meaning the amount of energy used by the building is roughly equal to the amount of energy the building creates. Now, the law was meant to be transposed into national law by July 2012, but Belgium and Finland failed to meet that deadline. Hmm. Two comments on this one. Let's consider first, then, this term, transpose into national law. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, let's try a little musical analogy. If I were to transpose the Beatles' song Love Me Do from the key of C to the key of F, would the melody sound different? No. Would the lyrics be different? No. So, if I transpose an EU directive law from European parliamentary headed paper to UK parliamentary headed paper, would the law be any different? No. And my second comment is, when Big Cheese Dave Cameroni, or his upstart sidekick Cleggy, in fact, let's not any out, as soon as any UK politician starts bleating on about their record in improving the deployment of renewables in Britain or their green energy programmes, just remember, they're simply dancing to the transposed tune of the European Union. You trust me to keep my EU referendum promise. David Cameron will insist on Friday that he can be trusted not to break his promise to hold a referendum on Britain's membership of the European Union, as he seeks to limit the damage from an expected third place finish in the 22nd of May European election. Now, to those people who say you won't deliver that renegotiation or referendum, I say, judge me by my record as Prime Minister, he will say. Others talk about acting in the national interest or standing up to Europe. I do it, time and again, often in the teeth of opposition in Brussels, and with a backdrop of uncertainty about whether it can really happen at home. Has made holding an in-out referendum on a looser relationship with Brussels a key plank of his offer in 2015. 
The pledge was largely designed to see off the threat from UKIP, as well as keep Eurosceptic Tory backbenchers happy. However, the Prime Minister is sensitive to accusation that he will be unwilling or unable to deliver his promise. Nigel Farage delights in reminding voters about the Prime Minister's unfulfilled cast-iron guarantee of a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, and warns that Cameron will once again find a way to wriggle out of the pledge. Cameron will say in a speech today, I have a track record of delivery, and believe me, whatever it takes, I will deliver this in a referendum. Labour won't, UKIP can't, I will. Hmm. Well, after the previous story, what can I say? Love, love me do. You know I love you. Many of you have been contacting us and asking us to promote our film, Betrayed. Well, we take this as a massive compliment and thank you for being so positive about it. For those that have not yet seen this film, let me explain a little about it. Britain joined the European Economic Community in 1972, which was referred to incorrectly as the common market at the time. Politics on the side of the House at the time put forward the case for and against. However, in secret, the British government had been briefed by the Foreign and Commonwealth Office that this project had much further reaching implications than those which were being publicly espoused. Now, the unit obtained those documents from the government which had been hidden for 30 years. The film, Betrayed, looks at what was really known and considers the nefarious clandestine activities which took place in the run-up to the 1970s. The film is a real eye-opener and proves beyond reasonable doubt that British politicians were wholly complicit in marginalising Britain, removing its global influence and handing huge chunks of sovereignty and control outside of our shores in direct breach of the British Constitution. Shocking, I know. Perhaps you don't believe me. Well, watch and see how Britain has been dismantled right under our noses. Now, remember to visit our... Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.